The Path to Positivity, Chapter 1 Work on Tiny Accomplishments Every Day A lot of people put themselves in an impossible situation when it comes to positivity. They say to themselves, unless something big happens today, I'm not going to feel happy about my accomplishments or feel much optimism about anything. Why should I? Nothing big or substantial is happening in my life. What's there to be hopeful about? The situation is where the problem is for many people because they're looking for this colossal triumph, turning point, or breakthrough. Only then would they permit themselves to feel confident. The truth is every single day is marked by at least one achievement in your life. These are relatively modest goals. Maybe you responded to all your emails or perhaps you showed up on time at work. Maybe you took the first or second step in an otherwise large project or objective. These are worth working for and celebrating. Life, believe it or not, is not about significant accomplishments. If you're unable to reach the final stage of huge goals, it doesn't mean that you're not successful and should just forget about it. Instead, focus on what's in front of you on a day-to-day -day basis. You will quickly realize that every single day, you manage to accomplish a few things. When you change perspective, you feel good instantly about yourself, leading to a more positive outlook. It turns out that you are more capable than you give yourself credit for. Paying close attention to what you manage to do every single day shows that you have a certain level of competence and it's growing. According to a study from the Harvard Business School conducted by Amabile and Kramer, the small things we achieve daily can provide us with a sense of progress. In most cases, this feeling leads to a perception of direction. You are not just wasting your time in your job or running around in circles in your relationships. Something is happening. When you take a moment to stop and take stock of the things you are accomplishing daily, you can't help but feel better about yourself. This feeling can then help you position yourself for more significant accomplishments or goals. How to work on tiny accomplishments every day. Go for simple and easily achievable tasks that have a measurable effect on you. Here are just some ideas I'm throwing out based on my experience. Make your bed every morning. It may seem simple, but you appreciate a clean bed when you come home in the evening. Laying on a flat, crisp, made bed is more comfortable and stress-relieving than lounging on unwashed and disorderly sheets. Make a list of your accomplishments for the day, no matter how small. Take a look at your to-do list and check out the items that were crossed out. Think about how you usually would hassle with these things. Today you are able to take care of them. Sure, there are others left undone or partly completed on your list, but focus on the ones you managed to do and allow yourself to feel good about it. How? Compare your sense of relief now with the procrastination that you usually sense coming on when you think about these items. Taking time to water your plants. Again, this might seem mundane, but look at how green your plants are. Realize that your plants are living things and are dependent on you, and you just took care of them. Now they provide beauty in your life, and they're also giving to you by producing oxygen. Permit yourself to get a sense of accomplishment from this task. Cooking a lovely yet easy meal. This activity is self-explanatory. You could have gotten Chinese takeout or passed by a drive through but you prepared a nice, home-cooked meal. This task takes effort, planning, and, yes, discipline. Feel free to pat yourself on the back. Reading and finishing a book. As you probably already know, reading a book these days is quite an accomplishment because you have so many other things to do on your plate. In many cases, you start with one book but can't seem to finish it. You have to read through the entire thing via installments. So when you can begin with a book and finish it, it is a sure feat. 
You found the time and you saw it through. Give yourself some credit. Get daily exercise no matter how brief. Even if you manage to just walk around the block once, allow yourself to feel good about it. Why? It could have been so much easier to sleep in, but instead you chose to exercise no matter how sleepy you felt. This act is the beginning of an iron will. Recognize that and celebrate it. Showing up to work early. It doesn't matter if you showed up an hour or even 30 minutes early. Allow yourself to breathe in and feel a sense of pride. Why? You know that a lot of your coworkers hate their jobs and it shows in how punctual they are coming in for work. When you show up early, you demonstrate to yourself that you can do things out of commitment even if it's inconvenient. The kind of emotional conflicts you may have about your work is not essential. It's okay to feel happy about your dedication and the fact that you could follow through. Increasingly, this ability is becoming rare nowadays. Helping someone out with something. It doesn't matter how small it is, when you're able to step out of your busy schedule to be there for somebody, that is an accomplishment. You're not doing it for a pat on the back, and you definitely shouldn't do it for a thank you. Instead, you're doing it for yourself. Because when you can prove that you can give to others, even though they have no means of repaying you, you have something to feel good about on a deeper level. Meditate or practice mindfulness. There are many meditation or mindfulness apps available online. They don't take all that long. Some apps are useful for 8 to 10 minutes. Believe it or not, that's all you need. But given how busy most people are, even this short period of mental quiet and inner serenity seems too much of a sacrifice. Be happy when you adopt a meditation or mindfulness practice that you can stick to every single day. It is one of the most potent investments you could ever make in your happiness and effectiveness. Keep these do's and don'ts in mind when working on tiny, daily accomplishments. Think of these do's and don'ts as best practice guides so you can fully unlock the value of the list that I just described. Do's. Do always challenge yourself. Be confident. Do stay positive and happy. Do spread and share your positivity. Do focus on your needs. It's essential not just to adopt the practice, but to stick to it. Also, when you fail to challenge yourself, you become complacent. Pretty soon you go back to your old routine. You have to be confident in what you're doing. You are not just scratching things off of the checklist. You are building your level of competence, which is the only realistic foundation for personal confidence. By doing so, you'll be able to stay more positive and feel happy about what you're doing. One of the best ways to intensify the inner confidence and positivity is to practice the list of actions above and share your optimism with others. A smile is always going to be free. Even if people smirk or frown at you, smile even more because you know it comes from within. The less you insist on it being returned to you, the stronger the source becomes. This thinking then enables you to focus on the positivity that is welling up within you. Don'ts. For the following list, you might want to avoid doing these things so you can continue building up your internal store of positivity. These tend to short-circuit, thwart, or otherwise degrade the growth of optimism, hopefulness, and sense of opportunity that you're working on. Don't be obsessed about winning. Don't entertain negative thoughts. Don't procrastinate. Don't gossip or talk about other people. Don't be afraid to fail. If what you're doing is trying to be the best in everything, or working to look good in front of others, you're doing it all wrong. Positivity is a goal in and of itself because it's not about winning or losing. It's about living up to your fullest potential so you can help others succeed. Do you see how it works? Do you realize how you should frame it? 
Similarly, when things don't go right or people don't understand what you're doing, it's effortless to just focus on the negativity and sink to a low level. But know that what you're trying to do is giving your shot to live your life the best way you could. Don't look down. Keep looking up and focus on what's ahead. When you're able to do that, you can be motivated by future challenges. It's in contrast to being depressed by setbacks behind or all around you. This thought leads us to procrastination. Procrastination is an emotional state. It is a bargaining tool that we turn loose on ourselves and is an energy vampire. You have to short circuit it or avoid it entirely. One of the best ways to do so is to just focus on what you're supposed to do. So if you have decided to show up to work early, then just do it. Even if your hair is not at its best or your clothes seem a little wrinkled, go for it. Before you know it, it becomes a physical routine. But the more you entertain procrastination, the stronger it becomes an influence on you. It doesn't attack you directly. It tricks you into thinking that there's something more important that you should be doing. Eventually, you get lost in the weeds. It's also imperative to avoid gossiping or talking about other people. Making other people look bad or celebrating their failures won't make you win. Life is not a zero-sum game such that if somebody's slice of success gets smaller, yours necessarily gets bigger. It doesn't work that way. It's the opposite. When we work to be our best, we expand the value available for everybody else many times over. So, stop competing with others and try to rise by pulling them down or making fun of them. Instead, focus on the road ahead of you and never be afraid to fail. You know you're on the right track when you're facing mistakes here and there because failure is a teacher. Quickly get back up and try again by doing something different. Ultimately, things will start to fall into place.